Hello, welcome to New Day Federal Way. I'm your host, Kathy Arndt. On October 23rd, Mayor Jim Farrell, city council members, and city staff joined residents at Wildwood Elementary School for the fifth Neighborhood Connection of 2014. Neighborhood Connection is a series of neighborhood meetings held at six elementary schools across Federal Way. These meetings bring City Hall to your neighborhood. Residents have the opportunity to learn about projects and proposals that enhance our local economy and quality of life. Neighborhood connections are also opportunities for residents to speak directly to their elected officials, ask questions, and alert the city to issues affecting their own neighborhoods. Residents braved a stormy night to join city officials and staff to discuss community issues. On today's show, we'll hear the latest from Mayor Jim Farrell on economic development and exciting new developments in the downtown core, including the Performing Arts and Conference Center and Town Square Park. Public Works Director Marwan Saloum will describe 2014 public works projects and school zone safety enhancements at Wildwood Elementary. Police Chief Andy Huang and his staff will discuss current crime statistics and crime prevention tips and resources. Chief Huang will also tell us about the biggest public safety issue in our community and how to protect ourselves and our family on a daily basis. You'll also hear Deputy Mayor Jean Burbage talk about the role of the City Council in representing the public. And Judge David Larson and the Dispute Resolution Center will provide information on how to access dispute resolution services. Finally, during the most important part of the program, residents bring their concerns, questions, and thoughts about community and neighborhood issues to City Hall. Let's join Mayor Farrell and the City Council for the Wildwood Neighborhood Connection. Welcome to our Neighborhood Connection, to your Neighborhood Connection. The most important part of this evening when we get through with our uh, program, and we're going to have a number of speakers, the most important part of this program is to hear from you. So if you've got comments, we're going to have a microphone here. Um, or, you know, if, uh, uh, if you're right where you're at and you just want to raise your hand, I can, I can hand you the microphone. We want to hear from you. We've got a, a couple of great presentations, um, and you're going to hear from uh, the police, public works, dispute resolution, and this idea about neighborhood connection, about really reaching out uh, into the neighborhoods is really almost like bringing City Hall uh, out to the neighborhoods. And what we want to do, and uh, oftentimes when you do just regular town hall meetings, there will be issues or questions and, we, and you don't have the actual staff. Uh, here, we've brought all the department directors and some deputy directors and, and frontline staff to help answer your questions. So every question answered tonight is going to get followed up on. And every Monday, when we have our management team meetings, we have the department director positions, we'll be following um, up on these issues. So let's go ahead and get started. This is, we're going to talk about mayor's vision, but when it says mayor's vision, it means the council and the mayor and the city. We've got a great city council, and we're going to talk about them in a minute, but we just have a very professional, hardworking council, uh, and we just work like hand and glove together. We're going to hear a, a, a presentation from Dispute Resolution Center. Uh, Marwan, our public works director, is going to give you an update on what we're up to um, as far as our public works. Um, uh, Andy Wong, our um, uh, police chief, is going to give an update. And then we're going to have also um, uh, safe city uh, and, uh, and some crime prevention techniques um, uh, and just kind of talk about some of those safety issues. And then we're going to hear from our Deputy Mayor, uh, Gene Burbage. Um, and then, again, the most important part of this night is to hear from you. So just uh, if you've got some questions or, or if, uh, if you, uh, well, uh, ask as many questions as you want, we'll, we'll get to them. This is our city council. Um, we've got uh, Deputy Mayor Gene Burbage. And uh, is uh, Bob Selsky here? Um, and we've got uh, uh, Dini Duclo, Kelly Maloney, Lydia Esefa Dawson. Uh, Lydia's here. Hi, Lydia. And um, uh, Martin Moore and uh, Susan Honda. And so we've got a very hardworking council. Uh, our meetings are on the first and third Tuesdays of the month at City Hall. We'd love to have you come to a meeting. This is actually when we did the rollout for the new police cars, the new look, the black and whites. But I'm not going to steal uh, the uh, the police. I'm not going to steal Andy's presentation, so I'll let him talk about it. Um, okay, management team. Um, we've got. Would all our management team members stand up, please? Let's give them a round of applause for all the hard work they do for us. And there, are, uh, most of them are pictured there. All right, let's talk about uh, what we're up to. Um, this was actually this uh, this first picture on the left was our very first. Uh, Neighborhood Connection Meeting at Brigadoon Elementary. And, um, and it's been great. Now, again, this is the fifth one. 
And uh, it, it, we've just heard from a lot of folks uh, out in the community, and it's really good to, just to hear on an individual sort of almost neighborhood by neighborhood approach about you know what matters to you. Because obviously, you know we're a service delivery organization; we work for you. And so um, we are your tax dollars at work. And so that's why if you've got a question or concern, you know, we, we want to hear it. And we're going to solve it. We started something on Channel 21. One of the things I noticed when I was, uh, when I was applying for the job of mayor uh, is I, I looked at, at Channel 21 and I thought, gosh, that content is the same content for the past four or five years. And so now for the first time, uh, in, in about four or five years, we've got brand new content on Channel 21. And what we've been doing is uh, televising. Uh, my wife teases me because uh, when, when she comes in the room and I'm watching the fireworks uh, show, she's like, have you seen this about four or five times? Uh, but it's, it, we've got the fireworks show and the whole, we had 20,000 people show up uh, for our uh, Red, White, and Blues Festival uh, here in Federal Way. It was just fantastic. And, and the fun part, fun part about being the mayor is I got to pick the music to the fireworks. So uh, it was a great event, and it was a, just a great time. And, but so we put that on, the MLK event. Each one of the, the reason why there's a camera right here is this meeting is going to get televised. And so we're televising these neighborhood connection meetings, and they replay. And remember I showed you about the, the new black and white police cars where we had the council? That's now on black and on, on uh, uh, channel 21. So what we're really trying to do is is show the people what's what their city hall is up to like the the new uh, Park that we're going to talk about that was on there as well. And then we had our first ever rally at the uh, uh, City Hall that is actually we had about 500 people there that number gets bigger every day um, We had about 500 people there and that was the biggest flag south of Seattle and I'll, just a real fun story about that flag uh, The small flag that we had right there was was on suction cups on the window and I, and I kept telling my management staff, I kept, we need a bigger flag. But all of the big flag, this is right before the Super Bowl, all the big flags were taken. It was going to take like six months to get it. Our IT guys, uh, one of them had a, uh, a brother that lived in Vietnam. And uh, about a couple of days before that, before that big event, that flag um, uh, flew in on a plane uh, from Vietnam. And it was donated to us by, our, uh, by one of our IT department's brother. So, it's all ready to go. Now the Seahawks just, uh, well, we're ready for another one. We just need the Seahawks to, uh, uh, to follow suit this year. So this one, for the first time in a number of years, we actually put out a, uh, a newsletter. It's very important. I mean, as we work for you, and, and this is a service delivery organization, we, we need to make sure that we get the word out. How many people got this in their mail? Oh, good. Okay. And uh, so that was the, uh, we're going to talk more about the park. And that was the groundbreaking of the pack uh, in which we knocked down the Toys R Us. They made the mistake of letting me get into the backhoe and, and knocking in part of that wall. So uh, getting me in was a lot harder than getting me out. And so, and we've got actually, in regard to the park, we've actually got some comments uh, section in regard to anything you'd like to see in our town square park, which uh, we'll talk about in a moment. Let's talk about downtown economic development because obviously one of the things that's obviously very important for our community is to make sure that we have a vibrant and thriving downtown core. And a lot of what we're doing is, is based on, is, and not just the downtown, but that's a key part of it as well. Town Square Park. This land actually set, sat vacant for nine years. It was an old, as you know, it was the old AMC movie theater site. And yeah, the council and I, and you know, when I was on the council and, and over the course of those nine years, we were really, we, there's a lot of vision and, and all kinds of different ideas about what can go there. But for me and for the council, waiting and waiting and waiting is, is not a policy. And at this point, at, you know, as soon as we got to a certain point in this year, uh, you know, about mid-spring, um, uh, we started moving on this. We had actually, during our council retreat, we're talking about what kinds of amenities we want to see at our town square park. And the idea is to create a sense of center and a sense of excitement and a place where we can gather. What is there now is just the beginning. It's going to turn into a beautiful gathering place for this community. And, you know, years and years from now, it's going to be the place where we really gather as a community. Uh, how many people heard about the, uh, uh, the movies in the park over the summer? You guys remember hearing about that? The first one, we're going to show that. We had like 900 people at the first one and over uh, nearly, I think, just over 1,000 people for the second one. And I think about the difference in a year about would 1,000 people have been there, uh, you know, the year before. It's just been absolutely fantastic. But the council is now, and I are now working with the same uh, planner in what I call uh, Town Square Park 2.0 because over the next six months we're going to be hearing from the public about what kinds of them, it definitely needs shade, it needs trees, 
It needs some playground equipment, splash park, different kinds of things. And with those kinds of things, the park is going to be something that will really gather. Um, and, and when it gets hot, you need, you need some shade. So uh, this is just the beginning. But this is when they first started breaking ground, and it was really exciting. And this was a great moment. That's my favorite shot of Gene, our, our deputy mayor. And they, they caught it right when the ribbon broke. And that picture is in, is in our office. And that was a great moment for Federal Way. What's really fun is right behind him, see that big white building right there? No longer stands. Federal Way is really going to change right before our very eyes. That's where the Performing Arts and Conference Center is going to go, and we'll talk about that. This was the first movie night in August, and uh, about, I would think, just over 900 people. It was a lot of fun. Obviously, we can't go out there now for movie night. Uh, and uh, so we're going to have, for the kids, uh, we're going to have movie night at the community center. And I just wanted to plug that just for a moment. D that's Friday, December 12th. We're going to have one of those inflatable screens that we had out in the park, but we're going to do it in the gymnasiums at the community center. So put it on your calendar. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we'll, we'll promote it again. But there'll be a costume co contest, and uh, I think it's the new version where the kids can sing along. It's got the, I've got a seven-year-old, so I've seen the movie about five times. This was something that was great. That had been, uh, this is the grand opening of the Family Funland here over at Steel Lake. Um, how many people have seen the revamp of, of Funland over at Steel Lake? Those, it's just beautiful. And um, we did something that was really uh, the ability world for handicapped children, where they can w roll their wheelchair. And it's the first ever in this nation uh, for kids to be able to, uh, uh, to really feel like they're part of that playground experience. But the whole park just looks beautiful. And uh, I got the council there. And, and that's uh, Miss Wheelchair America, Miss Jennifer Adams. Um, uh, we've got some of the box art around town, kind of a pilot project. These things are kind of a blank canvas, and sometimes they look a little blighty. It's not very attractive. So we're trying to, we got the 12th man there, and that's uh, the umbrellas are on the back side of, of uh, Red Robin. And again, we're just trying to create this aesthetic, this, this, uh, this feel, this newness. Um, and so in the budget that we're proposing, we're actually, uh, we put a little bit more money into it for next year, about 15000 um, that we had of one-time monies available, and we're going to spruce up different parts of town with some box art. But these, you remember how gray and drab those look. We want to we spruce up Federal Way. Okay, Downtown Economic Development. Performing Arts and Conference Center. Um, th this was approved unanimously by the Council in June. We had a big public process in which we had brought together a bunch of experts with the Blue Ribbon Panel, and they put out a 139-page report. And I just want to say, I, you know, I was very... As, as my friend H. David knows, I was a very uh, ardent uh, skeptic of the Performing Arts and Conference Center because I felt like we needed to make sure that our finances did not get compromised. And that's why uh, I put together and convened with the assistance of the council a panel of experts, uh, financial experts, like CEOs of banks and, and uh, people that were CEOs of companies, to look at the numbers. And we went out to two separate pro formas. They put out a report and said, you know, not only can you do this, you need to do this. And uh, the economic development impact of this is going to be absolutely phenomenal for our community. So this was us when we were knocked down in the, uh, uh, the Toys R Us site. It's a good group. That's what it's supposed to look like. It's going to be absolutely stunning and beautiful. And the development that's going to spur around it could be a, will be a game changer for this community. We've got the budget coming up this year. Actually, the, uh, we've got a structurally balanced budget. And what that means, obviously, is, and let me run through this and I'll explain. Uh, no new taxes, no layoffs, no cuts. We got, we're adding five new police officers because public safety is the number one priority. But the great thing is, four of those officers, we got COPS grants from the federal government. So four of those officers will be funded uh, by the federal government, 60% of their salary for a number of years. And um, so that means more cops on the street and supervisors in the field. That's kind of our mantra. So, uh, and then strategic investments in regard to, um, uh, we're working on Lakota. The, the kids are playing there on, in that park. They're playing in dirt right now. So we're working on a field for them. We're going to probably cobble together a couple hundred thousand uh, for that. Probably a total of $700,000 total for Lakota. And Dumas Bay, and number, uh, Dumas Bay down there in the water, we have a lot of conferences there, and we're going to um, invest another $300,000 to get that. But we have that money on hand. The key thing is, this is a structurally balanced budget. What I mean by that is, on, uh, there have been a number of years, in fact, the entire time I was on the council, we usually needed what they call one-time money uh, to fund positions or programs. For the first time, probably in 15, 16 years, all expenditures 
are met with on, all ongoing expenditures are met with uh, perfectly with ongoing revenues. So uh, economic growth, let's talk about that. That was at the uh, grand opening of the um, of Kohl's. Uh, Children's Hospital is coming to the Costco area. That's going to represent a $15 million investment to the community. Uh, Dick Sporting Good is open. Progressive Insurance right there on Pack Highway. That's about to open. And the mall is actually is, is investing about $27 million. Uh, we're going to work on an uh, economic development task force. We call it BRP2. Uh, remember Blue Ribbon Panel for the, for the PAC? We're going to do that like what we did for the PAC for economic development. Uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have a couple more of these presentations, and then it's uh, going to be your turn. So, uh, Your Honor, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and Your Honor. Uh, <laughs> May we give him a hand? Oh yeah, let's give him a round of applause. I'm Judge, Judge Larson, and Ju Judge Roberts and I represent the third branch of government that never seems to make the PowerPoint because uh, we're the offensive linemen of government. We only get noticed when we jump off sides. Uh, we are. Um, we are the branch of government that we don't want you to see us because if you're seeing us, you're in trouble. And with these guys, the city council and the mayor get to do all the exciting stuff and then we get to try to maintain the peace. In fact, we used to be called justices of the peace. And I'm gonna introduce Pamela South from the Dispute Resolution Center and I took a couple notes because her resume is pretty, pretty in depth. She is a mediator for Dispute Resolution Center at King County. She's a senior case manager doing foreclosure fairness program there. She also does small claims. So with that, let's give our attention to Pamela South who's going to tell us about the Dispute Resolution Center of King County and peace. Thanks. Oh, we can do better than that. He said a whole lot. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Pamela South and I'm really pleased to be here this evening to address you ladies and gentlemen. I just um, want to openly express a heartfelt thanks and appreciation and congratulations to Mayor Farrell for birthing this partnership between my non, the nonprofit um, organization that I work for, Dispute Resolution Center of King County, and the City of Federal Way. The Dispute Resolution Center of King County has been around since around 1986, about 27, 28 years. And it was um, funded or founded by um, the state of Washington when lawmakers thought that they wanted a way that all of Washington residents could have opportunity to resolve their disputes in a way that was affordable regardless of their ability to pay. You can call the DRC and um, we will contact the other party actually and see if they would like to mediate if there is a dispute. I thank you for welcoming us into the community. This is only the beginning of what can be, um, as I said, to the whole world of peacemaking a little bit at a time, actually transforming peacemakers one person at a time, one dispute at a time. Thank you. Public Works Director Marwan Saloum gave an overview of 2014 Public Works projects to maintain and improve streets and intersections and enhance traffic and schools on safety. Good evening, my name is Marwan Saloum. I'm the Public Works Director for the city and I'm gonna give you a quick update on our infrastructure, transportation infrastructure. As you could see on the map that uh, we had projects throughout the city of Feather Way. So the first thing I would like to do is thank you for your patience in navigating all of those projects and uh, oversee the successful completion of those projects. The first project I'm gonna highlight is Lakota Middle School Safe Route School project that was completed. It's at the intersection of uh, South three, Southwest 312 and Dash Point Road. We had two projects there. We have one project for the Safe Route School and the other project is city funded project which is improvement to the intersection of Dash Point and Southwest 312. City safety project, this is all of those flashing yellow that you've been seeing throughout the city. This is a project that was uh, also 100% funded by the federal government. It's about a million dollar. This is a 320th at 20th improvement. This is a project that I mentioned that we had the double left turn on uh, 320th, both in the south and uh, north direction. Uh, I'm sorry, east and west uh, direction. 
Southwest 336 intersection improvement. This is the one that we had uh, double left turn on all four legs of the intersection. This is an overlay project that we completed uh, on 320th. Also, that was a federally funded project. We got one, uh, 1 1.1 million for the overlay of that project, and you could see the finished product here. This is the construction of the water quality vault, and as I said, the reason I had those pictures, just for you to understand or realize the magnitude of the project, we almost tore up the entire road to construct that vault. There's some additional work where uh, we had to relocate some Lake Haven utility water main. That work will start as soon as we have uh, favorable weather. The contractor had to shut down today because of all of the rain we received. And the school zone enhancement project, this is a three project schedule for 2015, which is Adelaide, uh, South uh, 304th Street, Wildwood, and Olympic View. So Wildwood, out of the $200,000 I mentioned we have every year, that particular project for Wildwood is going to be around $80,000 to complete, which is mainly enhancement to have the 20 mile per hour uh, sign and uh, any other necessary sign to complete the project. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Police Chief Andy Huang reviews the latest crime statistics and public safety initiatives and talks about the critical issues of traffic and pedestrian safety. Good evening, everyone. We're glad to be with you tonight. There are two takeaways from the police department presentation. There'll be three presenters. One. So what are some of the steps that you can take to better protect yourself and your family? And second takeaway will be how you can partner with us to make our neighbor, your neighborhood and our community safer. Hope you find the presentation uh, interesting and informative. We're going to share with you, first of all, crime statistics, how we keep track of crime, how we deploy our police officers in the field. We use uh, some scientific approach, a lot of analytical work in terms of uh, uh, fighting crime. We'll share that with you. And last part, Safe City, it's one of the ways that you could partner with us to make our community safer, to fight crime. This is a map of our city. Our city is 22.48 square miles. Our population is 92,000, around 700 people. We are the 11th largest city in the state, fifth largest city in King County, and we are growing as a city. And this is a map, uh, a sector map, for purposes of policing, we divide our city into four sectors. So here's your uh, reporting district, 64. So the numbers that you're looking at here is from January to September 2013 for 2013 and 2014. For purposes of comparison, that's nine months crime stats. The overall number from last year to this year is roughly the same. And over here, these are non-criminal reports. So again, fairly close from year to year. One of the things I wanted to point out is, what because this month is DV Awareness Month, one of the top five calls for service that we respond to as a police department is domestic violence. 2013, on average, we have responded to 213 domestic violence calls per month. So not all domestic disputes are a crime, because sometimes they're just verbal. There's no crime but our officers are required to document the incident. And by far, um, you know, a lot of times people worry about crime, but generally speaking, when we have violent crime, whether it's aggravated assault or even homicide, quite often it's domestic violence related or by someone that you know. And what I wanted to share with you is that um, for young people, traffic accident leading cause of death. So what I wanted to share with you, just if you just did two things that I'm gonna share with you, and if you could communicate that with your family members, your chance of statistically of being involved in a serious injury accident or fatality is dramatically reduced. One is when you're entering an intersection, whether you have a green light or you're entering after the light turn grid from a check to your left and check to your right as you enter the intersection. Second thing, just pay attention when you're driving. Inattention is a leading cause for traffic collisions. We take driving for granted. We just get in the car and drive, yet people don't realize that is the most dangerous thing that all of you did tonight. Just get into your car and drive to this location. Statistically, you're far more likely to get injured or killed in a traffic collision. So when you're driving, pay attention. 
And fatality collision it peaked around 50,000 in America, and it dropped down to about 35,000. But right now, statistically, we are seeing a slow creep upward. And can anybody guess why we're seeing more fatality collisions in America? Smartphones. Smartphones. And, and so we are taking the lead as an agency to address distracted driving, which I'll share with you. But I want to drive that point. So talk to your teenagers, your college students, talk to your spouse about driving. Pay attention when you're driving. Sometimes we're doing everything but driving. We're eating, radio, makeup, newspaper, smartphone, texting. A couple of, couple of initiatives. Uh, the next two that I'll share with you is an initiative actually from the mayor. When he came into office, before he even came into office, he started talking about this. But when he came in, he wanted to enhance the visibility of the police in the downtown core area. So we have a substation now across the street from the transit center on 23rd. Now what we did is we put two units. Now the police department has 19 squads or working units within the police department. So we put two from field operations in the downtown substation. By putting these two units, they're coming and going from the downtown area. So clearly, it enhances safety. We don't have too much crime in the city center or city hall, same concept. So we're doing that. Second thing, um, I've been told I'm kind of running out of time. Between the three presenters, we have 15 minutes. So I'm just going to kind of zip through. Please ask us questions during the Q&A. Uh, we went to a, a black and white, reveal, unveiled that September 16th. And uh, when we initially, the mayor wanted to go with this idea, 66% of the department people were in favor of it because we actually did a survey. And then once we got the graphic design, brought the car in, I can't find a single person that wants to go back to the blue. So we're really excited about that. We're going to phase it out in about a five-year period so we don't spend additional money coloring or uh, putting uh, wraps on these vehicles. But it turned out really nice. Here's another look from a different angle. Yes. And then uh, Nick and Derek project. This is a vehicular homicide case from 2012. We are putting more emphasis. Mayor Council is giving us additional funding to fight DUIs. And uh, we named this project after two high school students that were killed in a DUI accident. And they were killed in a DUI collision on I-5 in Tequila. So to honor them, we named our project Nick and Derek Project. And we're also distracted driving. So we are conducting emphasis patrol within the within the police department. So do not drive with your cell phone, do not be texting, because we are conducting emphasis patrol. Uh, we went to a, a black and white, reveal, unveiled that September 16th. And uh, when we initially, the mayor wanted to go with this idea, 66% of the department people were in favor of it, because we actually did a survey. And then once we got the graphic design, brought the car in, I can't find a single person that wants to go back to the blue. So we're really excited about that. We're going to phase it out in about a five-year period. So we don't spend additional money coloring or uh, putting uh, wraps on these vehicles. But it turned out really nice. Here's another look from a different angle. Yes. And then uh, Nick and Derek Project. This is a vehicular homicide case from 2012. We are putting more emphasis. Mayor Council is giving us additional funding to fight DUIs. And uh, we named this project after two high school students that were killed in a DUI accident. And they were killed in a DUI collision on I-5 in Tequila. So it, to honor them, we named our project Nick and Derek Project. And we're also distracted driving. So we are conducting emphasis patrol within the, within the police department. So do not drive with your cell phone. Do not be texting, because we are conducting emphasis patrol. We con I get complaints from citizens saying, hey, we got real crime in our city. Why are you issuing even traffic tickets? But I can tell you there's a balance that we need to, because I'm telling you it's one of the most dangerous things. And then automatic license plate readers, we had one. The mayor added, wanted to add additional two. And I'll say for the mayor, because he didn't say it tonight, but he was a prosecutor for 19 years, and uh, he did auto theft. So one of the things he wanted is impact auto theft. We got uh, three of these now in the field. Now, our auto theft uh, are, are down by about 50% last three or four months. But it's not at all attributed to this. We've really arrested some prolific auto thieves in our community chop shops, and it's had a huge impact. But this is certainly helping us as well. I just want to, last thing, I want to tell you there are a lot of dedicated men and women that are committed to serving all of you, and it's a privilege for me to serve in this capacity. Thank you. Lindsay was a school teacher, Federal Way School District. We stole her from them, and she's one of our crime prevention analyst specialists. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, 
yes, I am going to need that. Um, I again don't want to take up a lot of time, but one of uh, one of my jobs is crime prevention. It's the it's my favorite part of the job because I really enjoy trying to get out in the community and talk to people about what they can do to protect themselves from becoming a victim. Um, as the chief said, for most of us general everyday good citizens, the things that are going to affect us most are burglaries, vehicle break-ins, um, property crimes, which can be very frustrating because a lot of times they are um, preventable by just doing some good common sense measures. Um, some of the things that are listed on, on the burglary prevention screen behind you are some of the things that we talk about during block watch meetings. Some of you I've actually met through block watch meetings previously. If you are in a cul-de-sac or a neighborhood around here that doesn't have an active block watch, please come see me, see, see Michelle, and we can talk about how to get that started. Burglary prevent, prevention is one of the things that we really talk about and aim for at the police department. One of the services that we offer is for myself or someone from our unit to come out and do a free home security survey of your home. Um, mailboxes and packages, as we're getting into the part of the year, um, a lot of you are starting to order things for holidays and sending gifts. We really want you to know that there's an increase of those kind of thefts starting now all the way through the new year. Um, we have criminals who will follow mail trucks, they will follow UPS trucks looking for these things. Try to always have your mail or packages delivered securely. Have them delivered to your place of work and not your home or to a neighbor's home that is home all day if you're at work. These are just some things that we like to have people think about. Um, block watch, I am the person to help you set up a block watch or to reactivate a block watch that might not be active or have been active in a few years. Your neighborhood does have some new signage um, up and around it saying that we have an active block watch and that the neighbors are gonna call 911 when they see suspicious activity. So we wanna really encourage you to do that. That sends a message, as, as the chief said, the more, uh, the more police activity that comes in on the suspicious activity, the less crime. There's a direct correlation that we see. If people are doing things that are suspicious and our officers can contact them then, kind of question them and get them out of the neighborhood, the likelihood of that whatever crime they were going to commit happening goes down quite a bit. And that's kind of what Block Watch is about. Meeting your neighbors, having a contact at the police department like myself to really um, pass information to the officers who work your area during the hours that things are happening. So again, feel free to come and see uh, myself or Michelle over at the corner. She's going to tell you about our Safe City program, which is sort of the cyber block watch for our city. So thank you. If anybody's interested, please come find me over there. Hi, Michelle Roy. I'm going to talk to you about Safe City and crime, uh, CrimeReports.com. So basically, Safe City is a program that was started in 2007. It has two components, surveillance cameras and a website. And while the, there was a lot of news and press over the surveillance camera, the website is what I feel is most valuable to you. So pretty much what you do is you sign up as a group, either maybe through an HOA or you get your neighbors together or maybe you have an established block watch or even start a block watch. And you have an administrator who approves all the members and you can post what's going on like a blog um, for, your, for your whole entire area. And so um, if maybe your house is broken into, you would post, oh, my house is broken into during this time, this day, and it would go out uh, to all the members of that group. And pretty much you are by sector, uh, so the sectors that Chief Wong mentioned earlier. And this is kind of what an alert looks like, and it's great, you have a map, everyone comments, and it's, we've really had some great successes and solved some great crimes. And another one, if you're, maybe you're not into the um, block watch, getting together with your neighbors, this one I love. I brought this to the police department. It's called crimereports.com. And so you can go home today, put your address in, and it'll show you all the crimes that have happened around your neighborhood and in all a federal way. And our non-emergency number that we've kind of been promoting, if you ever see anything suspicious, don't ever hesitate to give us a call. Give us the opportunity, give the officers the opportunity to go out and contact that suspicious person. Good evening. I'm delighted to be here. My name is Jean Burbage and I am serving as Deputy Mayor. It's my pleasure to serve with six other council members who are very caring and hardworking and the mayor introduced and listed them this evening already. Um, 
I'll just talk a little bit about the role of the council and how we work together with the rest of the city. Uh, the role of the council in the elected mayor form of government is to be the legislative branch to work on policy direction and budget authority. So while the mayor implements the policy and the budget and manages the day-to-day -day operations of the city, the, it's the council that sets that policy. As council members, we listen to you and others in the city to hear a range of viewpoints, ideas, and suggestions to develop a sense of what folks are thinking. We also take input from meetings like this tonight, and we factor all of those into the policy and budget decisions. And right now, of course, as has been mentioned, we're working on the, uh, the current budget process, making those decisions for the coming years. So we focus on economic development in particular right now, and you heard some examples of that with what we're looking at in our downtown with the Town Square Park, with the Performing Arts and Conference Center, and other features of that downtown, as well as recruiting important new businesses and supporting the ones we have. And we hope to hear from you. It's good to see you here. Thank you very much. Mayor Farrell invites audience members to share their thoughts during the public comment session. For the most important part of the evening, we want to hear from you. We do have this uh, microphone set up here. Go ahead, Gary. Okay, I've got uh, two issues I'd like to bring up. First of all, I'd like to see the Public Works Department put up some more school directional signs because they're not all present at all the schools. Give you a couple examples, Valhalla on 272nd. It goes right down the street, but there's no sign to telling you that. And there used to be a sign there, but I think they took it out and didn't put it back. And then another example well, is- Hold on, Gary, hold on for a second, because we're gonna note all these down. Marwan, can you, can you note all these so to make sure that we follow up on these? So Valhalla's one of them. Yeah, okay, Adelaide's another one on 21st, where it goes to the left and around the corner there. And then the other issue I have is the red light cameras. And uh, I don't have a problem with you installing them. What I have a problem with is the city not taking full responsibility for the system like Auburn's done. So that if you have a ticket, you can go to court in Fedway and, uh, and then pay it there at, through our, somebody that's administering it through the city, not contracting it out to some contractor in Arizona or whatever, because uh, if you want, you should have the option, if, if you have limited resources or you don't want to pay the fine, you should have the option to do um, public service in lieu of paying the fine, but right or now you can't do that. Driving school or something like that. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think we do, you know, Judge Larson had to leave, but I, yeah. I do think that there's an opportunity to contest and come to municipal court. The, the um, uh, my mom got one of those tickets a couple yeah. of years ago. Well, and I so, know. I, but I couldn't come to court. I was on the city council. I had to get a friend of mine to help her out. And, uh, you know, they got, you know, they have all kinds of diversions and traffic school and, and that kind of thing. Yes, sir. Hi, I have uh, two feedbacks and one question, but, yeah. The first gentleman reminded me of those traffic lights. I find them blinding at night, and I have five seconds where I can't see after every flash. Right. So I, f I find that to be a safety hazard more than a, a help. Uh, first, I wanted to say I live next to Steel Lake Park along the fence line. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember several years ago mowing my lawn and hearing gunfire and poking over the fence and seeing people rushing off and driving away. And, yeah. uh, <clears throat> The city has done a great deal to improve the safety of the park. And uh, several years ago, I had thought of going around the neighborhood and getting thank you signatures, but <clears throat> I regret I didn't do that. Um, but I do appreciate the improvements at Steel Lake Park. In previous years, I had seen a lot of bicycle cops. I saw two this summer, maybe. And I'm really? out with my dog all the time out there. Now, so this I, is around, like, uh, what's your, where, what, where do your cross streets? Are you... Uh, you well, know? I'm in the park itself. Okay. So usually uh, there's uh, bicycle cops going through, and, but I'm noticing that um, enforcement's getting laxer there as far as parking goes and so forth. The park's people are, are doing a great job of trying to keep the garbage up, but they have no authority to move people. And I know there's higher priority things in the city, but it'd be nice to see the, the police come through a little more frequently in the summer. That's right. Okay. okay. That's good. Where's our, where's Chief? 
Oh, there you are, sir. So, so that's just feedback. So, no, Chief, no. let's let's uh, you and I talk. Uh, can you uh, can you connect with this gentleman as soon as he gets done speaking? Let's make sure we get his name and number. What I'd like to do is understand what our rotation is for bicycle cops, uh, bicycle officers uh, through the park and kind of where they're at. One of the things they do is they uh, we used to just oh, you know where Marlene's is, mm -hmm. right next to Marlene's. We used to just have a storage area for all the bicycles and uh, or the bikes for the for those uh, officers now we've moved those over to the substation right next to the uh, right next to the um, uh, across the street uh, from the transit station and that's the substation so uh, the idea was to make sure that you know they're much more active in that area but let's find out kind of what that rotation is and uh, we make sure we get a, a report back to you okay Hi. Hi, good evening. I'm Ann Etter, and I just really appreciate everybody coming out here tonight. This is great to have it in the neighborhood. I have a question for you to see if you can elaborate a little bit on, I liked your idea of bringing universities uh, down south here, satellite yes. campuses. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about what some of the key factors are, and if you can use any of our help to bring them? Some of us are graduates or affiliated with the universities. Well, this is, we this is a really, really, really exciting development I'm working on we're working on something that's going to be really exciting but I can't really I can't, can't quite say. go I can't quite go there uh, we've got a college initiative in which we're trying to get these people here um, the idea is getting them here is is going to be the issue of where would they be now why I've always and we've been talking about the downtown you know getting students and and you know faculty and that kind of thing creating that vibrant downtown feel mm -hmm. um, so where in our downtown would that be? And, and that's the discussion that, that we were having. So we, those discussions are ongoing, but I think this is right around the corner. Welcome. Well, I wanted to say uh, thank you very much for having this forum here. This is really nice. I'm hearing some good stuff. Um, I'm gonna talk about my pain point right now. My Please. pain point is transportation. Yep. Right now, Metro is making cuts. Um, we were, I was kind of excited that light rail was gonna make it out here, and then all of a sudden they said, eh, maybe in 20 years, which was not what anybody wanted to hear. Right. Um, we uh, paid additional taxes towards it, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, I know there were complaints to Metro saying, hey, wait a minute, uh, you know, we paid into this, why aren't we seeing it? So they kind of said, oh, well, okay, we'll make, do some planning. Did you hear about the update about what the King County Council is doing in regard to turning around those cuts? No. Okay, so the latest, Dow Constantine <laughs> is doing a good job in, in, in transportation. And uh, one of the things that, um, that he's talking about is getting coordination. In fact, when Tim first got here from Sacramento, he used to be the economic development director for the city of Sacramento and also San Diego, and we've got a real rock star here. When we first got here, he said, what do you mean King County and, and, and uh, Sound Transit are not the same agency and they're like literally like a couple blocks away from each other. So the key thing, the future is in regard to bus service and transportation, um, these need to be integrated services. They need to be working together. So in order for them to go anywhere south of 240th, ST3 will, be on a, will likely be on a ballot, if they can get approval, will likely be on a ballot in 2016. So on 2016, and I'm throwing a yeah. lot at you here. I, no, no, I, I got so it. So yeah. at 2016, well, what the legislature has to give Sound Transit the authority to put this on the ballot for 2016. So that means we got two. We have two bites at the apple. Well, there's two legislative sessions. For this is how we're going to get our light rail. Okay. There are two legislative sessions before the fall of 2016. This coming up legislative session, and then uh, 2016. Um, if they can get that, uh, that authorization to go out for a vote, then it'll go out for a vote. My name is Tom Sonic, and I've lived in this neighborhood for 35 years. And I guess I have two concerns for the chief of police and one for the planning division or the, the traffic control guy. All right, chief. No, he can sit down. He can hear me. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> one, one of the things that I'd like to see in this neighborhood is more police presence, not an officer all the time, drive through once a day during the day. The last time I said something about that, they sent a motorcycle cop to my neighborhood, which I walked here about a block and a half. He wrote my son-in-law a ticket for parking on the wrong side of the street. That's not the kind of <laughs> visibility we wanted. That's not what you were looking for. No. Okay. And the second one is they set up a speed trap at the top of 304th and Highway 99. Yeah. I don't have a problem with the speed trap. What I do have a problem with is the high school students think they're invisible and they, they 
run across that street there when we're turning left. Yeah. And I've been just about in that crosswalk and the kids were standing on the corner. Yeah. Their light's red, mine's green to turn left and they run in front of me. Yeah. We're going to lose one of them kids. Well, and you, you know, we've had a number of car pedestrian accidents um, just this year that, you know, the, the chief and I have been talking about. Uh, you know, just recently, actually, over by Federal High School. We, yeah, well, that's, had, that's those guys I'm talking about. Yeah, and so I think we've got to have, um, and I know that every year, you know, our, our police do, you know, public service announcements, And but I think we've got to do... I think the motorcycle cop, instead of doing the traffic, the, the speed trap one day, needs to hide over by that gas station and maybe not write the kids up, at least tell them. You know, you're not right. supposed to be doing that stuff. I, I do think that we need maybe uh, some sort of campaign about... Um, uh, you know, jaywalking and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, pedestrian safety because, you know, we had a fatality um, your earlier, earlier, I'd say about a month ago on 21st Avenue uh, on the west side of town, just tragic. And we had the, just another 15-year-old high school student to Federway High School just two weeks ago, uh, really tragic. Um, and she's still in the hospital. And so... Um, They're not know, as so. big as the car, they just think they are. I know, I know. That's all I got. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. My name is Holly and I have just two quick questions or points, I guess, if you want to call it that. I do appreciate the Performance Arts Center being in there. That's going to be great. Yeah. And I will be very interested in, in looking and seeing how everybody handles the extra traffic. Right. That's going to be coming down there. Right. And that's one of my questions um, is going to be on 320th and 25th, was there going to be anything done there? Which is, it's over by, um, I used to be Marie Callender's. What is that now, the Ram? Yeah, the Ram, the Ram. yes. Yeah, the Ram there. If you're on 25th and you're trying to get on 320th, especially during rush hour, so you're going north-south, Yeah. you can't turn left or right. And most of the time, it's even blocked from going straight because cars are blocking it on 320th. Let's have, uh, is Rick around? Oh, there you are, all right. So is that something in the future they're gonna be looking at? Well, yeah, actually, um, there's a number of issues with that stretch of 320th. Um, and, you know, we, we try to do the best we can with the signal timing. Um, but, yeah, 23rd is approaching capacity. Mm -hmm. The I-5 southbound off-ramp, we added those turn lanes, but there's not enough, essentially, throughput downstream to get everybody through there. Um, is it possible to finish 25th, which is heading for the um, the Metro Park and Ride? Right now, that is not. That is a dead end, except for the buses coming out. Um, now, we did try adding the left turn phases off of 25th that was intended to help clear people out um, of Gateway Center in particular, but it sounds like they, they have nowhere to go. They have no place to go. <laughs> and, and, and frankly, we've been seeing a lot more of that at 23rd as well. That they're blocking. Um, and um, one of the other complicating factors is we no longer control the signals at the freeway ramps. We used to. The state uh -huh. took them back. Um, and that has one of been one of my pet peeves. And, you know, would like to see, you know, basically state law change to allow us to manage those because Frankly, it worked better when we had control over the whole corridor. Um, so we have a few constraints to deal with. We do the best we can. When an intersection approaches capacity, we don't have a whole lot of latitude. So, but we're always tweaking. And if we put up a sign there, I would like to be able to change the sign that is on southbound I-5. It's the 320th, turning right onto 320th. It says it's okay to turn right on red. It doesn't say anything about stopping. These cars are not stopping, and they are coming into traffic that is, has the green light to flow on 320th. Okay, I will, uh, we'll talk with uh, uh, our traffic folks about that. Thank you very much. Sir? Mayor, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, I have some good news. Oh, what's that? I live over here in Federal Way for 30 years, and uh, we got in a lost control of our block, and we had some trouble on it. So we, I got a hold of the uh, Federal Way Police Department. And I'm here to thank them and all the gentlemen that are back there for all their effort and what they did the two years it took to clean the block and get our block back. And at the same time, I don't see a fireman around, but I, where I live is on 301st Street where the water tower is. I don't know if you're familiar yep. with that, with all that vacant property. Yep. 
Yeah. Well, every so often we get transients back there. And I called the Federal Lake Police Department. And I talked uh, with the assistant at the time. And about a day or two later, the fire department's out there taking a look at it. Good. And I was very happy with the response time and what they've done. And I'm very happy with both organizations. They've really taken care of it. And it's kind of ironic that the lady that's back here that talked to you lives about three blocks down from me. Oh, wow. And I was going to bring up that situation. What I was going to bring up was that we got an 1,100 square foot house and we got about nine to ten cars constantly outside of it. And I was wondering if there was any ordinance on how many people can be in a house. There is. But yes. I think that she's <laughs> found out, answered my question. Well, good. Well, we've got Marty Gillis right behind you. And, uh, and she, yes, exactly. So what we would need is, uh, we just need you know, a report. We're actually, one of the things that we've been doing at City Hall <laughs> is really uh, upgrading our um, uh, code compliance. We've actually uh, increased staffing there and, and uh, we're revamping our entire code compliance um, uh, uh, system to be much more proactive as opposed to Bring a question up. Yeah. And one of the things that bugs me the most is people that rent homes yeah. and they put winters in it and they don't maintain it and it turns into garbage. Yeah. Is there anything that a person can do to keep, you know, and it happens, you know. I, you know, I knocked on thousands of doors last year, and you know, and it's. You know, I it's think you knocked on mine. What's that? You knocked on mine. I did, <laughs> and uh, as soon as you said the water tower, I'm like, I remember. That's yeah, exactly. So, I, and and that whole thing, that memory about that particular area goes throughout the whole city. And one of the things I saw is, we the uh, you know, the investment in your home is the biggest investment you make likely in your entire life. Well, that's I retired and yeah. I put a bundle into my house yeah and I don't want it to go down in value and it's not going well what we're going to do why we've revamped our entire approach to code enforcement used to be that neighbor had to dime out neighbor neighbor had to call in on their neighbor we're going to a much more proactive city we're going to kind of grid by grid by grid take back our neighborhoods and if there's a problem we've we've developed the hot spots approach where if we've got you know a chronic you know issue where somebody's got uh, garbage in their front yard or if they've got you know, the weeds are growing. We're very, very proactive about this. We've hired up new staff. And actually, I've, I've got a survey going on in our, in our organization to revamp our entire code compliance uh, process and make it much more um, uh, systematic. And so we're going li to literally grid up the town and have somebody responsible for a particular section of town. And that way, they'll know it they, and they'll own it. And so if we've got 11 cars at a certain house, Boom, we just, you know, we just go out and we start writing citations. What I want you to do is provide, you know, as you go there, mm -hmm. uh, can you give updates uh, just periodically about what you're seeing? Would you mind doing that when you're, when you're out there? Yeah, hey, I did it with my neighborhood. I could do it. Uh, exactly. <laughs> well, it'll help us because the, more, yeah, eyes, the more eyes, the better. Thank you. Anyone else? You guys, thank you so much for coming. Have a nice evening. Would you like to join Mayor Farrell and his staff at a future Neighborhood Connection? Keep watching to see the dates and locations of next year's meetings, along with contact info for the Mayor's Office. You can also find all of this information at the City's website, cityoffederalway.com slash neighborhood connection. Thanks to all the residents who braved a windy, rainy night to talk about neighborhood issues. And thanks for watching Neighborhood Connection, Wildwood Edition. I'm Kathy Arndt, and I'll see you next time on New Day Federal Way.